Hi, and welcome to my channel. There's been quite a few articles online recently about the price of cameras and are they going to come down now that the price of film has gone up? Let's have a talk about that. It doesn't take a genius to look at eBay prices and to perhaps look at the prices on Facebook group classifieds and see that film cameras in the last few years have gone up in price hugely. And in fact, some, like the big rangefinder roll film Mamiya's, have gone up absolutely stratospherically and in fact are pretty much beyond the reach of the average Joe in the street. The whole history of film camera prices since the introduction of digital photography has been a complete roller coaster and I think we need to take a look back at it. Well, to go back to the beginning, it didn't take working professionals I was one at the time, long to realise that the newly emerging digital technology was going to be fantastic both for our workflow and for our bottom line, our profit. So as soon as cameras were sufficiently technically advanced, we sold up our analogue, our film cameras, uh, my Nikon FM2s that I'd used for so many years and my Nikon F801s, they all went on the market and in fact the market was flooded with cheap analog cameras. Um, you could buy RB67s or um, Hasselblads for a few hundred pounds. It was happy hunting time if you were an enthusiast and looking for film cameras. Um, but there weren't as many looking for film cameras as there are now. And this is where the rub lies. I don't think at the beginning of the digital photography age, any of us expected film to rise phoenix-like from the ashes again. Well, it's a slightly slow and creaky phoenix, but it certainly has risen. And over the last five years, the interest in film photography has gone up and up. You only have to see how many more film retailers there are online and indeed the number of slightly hip stars that are using the Contax T2 or the Olympus Mu and influencing a new generation to use film. It's a phenomenon and it's one that I'm very happy to see. But the fly in the ointment, and I think this is what we're all seeing, is the price increase, well, the price increase last year, and the one to come this year from Kodak, which is going to make colour film very, very expensive indeed. Well, certainly compared to the way it was in the past. Now, I think we have to look at why colour film was cheap in the past to understand why it's expensive now. The biggest reason why colour film in particular was cheap was because it was mass market. Everybody used colour film. I mean the world and his wife. Hollywood used colour film and indeed still does use colour film quite a lot. But everybody when they went on their holidays loaded their little Kodak Instamatic with colour film. Everybody, when they went to their works Christmas party, loaded their little snapshot camera, perhaps like this little Olympus, with film. And everybody used film. Almost at a stroke, that stopped. And that's not just because of the conventional digital camera, it's mostly to do with the smartphone camera. All of that film use 
is now on mobile phones. And of course, the film companies have no profit stream there. So what used to subsidize all film use, that's amateur film use, you know, enthusiastic amateur film use, has gone. That subsidy, which was from the snapshotter, has disappeared. And companies initially downscaled because they couldn't afford to keep great production lines running just for the small amount of film that was required for Hollywood and for the, the few professionals and serious amateurs who were still using it uh, in the sort of mid-2000s. They couldn't keep that up. Kodak downscaled hugely. And now, with the rise of film again, we have come to that painful part where there's not that subsidy and still Kodak has to try and satisfy demand. And satisfying demand means employing more people, uh, investing in plant and putting their film prices up. Now, this is a painful thing and people are criticizing it because it, it's horrible to have your hobby or your pastime made more expensive. But I honestly don't think Kodak have got much choice in all of this. We've just had the worst year of film shortages, colour film shortages in particular, that I can ever remember. And I think that this has left us all a little bit on the raw side and has really led to this question of, are we going to lose people from film photography because of these higher prices? Um, personally, yes, I think we'll lose some people, some people who were dabbling at the edges, perhaps um, paying for processing and printing and possibly even scanning. And so we're facing the full brunt of the price rises. I think people who maybe um, scan themselves or um, even develop colour film themselves won't be feeling that pinch quite as hard but we will lose some people, I'm sure we will. Does that actually mean that they'll be selling up their film cameras and there'll be a general price drop? People won't want film cameras as much. I actually don't think that's true. I think, yeah, certain film cameras will, if not become cheaper, will certainly level out in price. And I think there, about some of the high-end compacts like the Contax T2, which have become hugely expensive. I, I think maybe the people who were dabbling around the edges of photography with those will go over to shooting with digital and save some money in the process. So I don't actually think the bottom is going to drop out of the camera market. I think I'm reasonably safe with my investment in my collection of cameras. This, sad to say, is only a small part. But I do think prices will start to stabilise. And I think because we are still in a closed market, because it's really only Leica that's producing new film cameras until Pentax come through with their promise of creating a new range, which I made a previous episode about. I think until we get more film cameras coming in, prices are going to stay pretty much about the same. But I do think we will see a slowing of that meteoric rise. So if you've enjoyed this episode, perhaps you'll hit the like button. And if you've really enjoyed it, perhaps you'll think about subscribing. That really does the channel good, and we have just gone through that magical thousand subscribers barrier. Like the sound barrier, only quieter. <laughs> if you'd like to support the channel even further and keep the lights on, then perhaps you can pop over and support me on my Patreon site. Uh, the link's in the description. 
So, until I see you again, take care of yourselves and keep taking pictures. So, if you've enjoyed this episode, <coughs> oh dear, <coughs> um, bulk loading maybe, or any of the things that I'm going to start this again. And if you've really enjoyed it, so, don't be hysterical, lad. Really, do not be hysterical.